Hey, a bug hunter reported an unrestricted Google database access to the bug bounty program. They wrote, I got access to Google's MySQL database. This bug occurred due to using default credentials in a Google database. Here are the steps to reproduce. Use the MySQL command with user root and empty password and the target IP address. Voila, access to the database. This issue sounds very serious, right? But it turns out this issue was rejected as won't fix. Unfortunately, this was an invalid report. But why? Let me hand you over to Pwn Function and he will explain why this is not an issue for Google. Hello there, my name is Pwn Function. I'm a YouTuber who loves to make videos on computer security. And in this video, I have the pleasure to partner up with Google and talk about identifying Google's infrastructure while hunting for bugs. Oftentimes, Google receives reports regarding a vulnerability on a Google's IP space, and many times they get rejected. The reasoning behind the rejection is simply that the vulnerability did not exist on any Google's owned services, but instead it exists on a service maintained by a Google Cloud Platform customer. You might already know that Google provides cloud computing services via Google Cloud Platform or short GCP where customers can spin up their own servers or store data on a persistent disk or do a whole lot more. Almost anyone can sign up to Google Cloud Platform and start a server. This means that the person responsible for starting the server controls that server. Basically, we'd be able to run code on the instance we created, and this is totally by design. It's essentially remote code execution as a service. And the rationale behind it is that anyone can run their own web or other applications in the cloud. Physically, Google still owns the server, but it's rented out to the customer so that they can build their own projects. Anyone can run their code on what's called a Google Compute Engine. Basically, these are virtual machines based on an image or an operating system of your choice. And you get to run any code you want or do anything on the instance assuming that the actions that you're doing are legal and ethical. Now, a common problem bug hunters face while looking for bugs on Google's infrastructure is to differentiate between Google's services or applications running on Google's infrastructure and customers' applications or services running on Google's infrastructure. Those are two different things you need to verify that it's Google's actual services or applications before you report them. Here's one way to confirm if an IP address belongs to one of Google's services or to the customer using Google's infrastructure. One can make Whois queries on popular websites like ARIN and check the comments under the organization section. Let's try this out. Let's try to create a new Google Compute instance on Google Cloud Platform. And this will give me a public IP address and it's shown right in my dashboard, as you can see there. If we submit this IP on the website for a Whois query and scroll down all the way to the organization section, you'll see this comment. The IP addresses under this org ID are in use by Google Cloud customers. This clearly tells us that the IP address is used by Google Cloud customers, which means this is not a part of Google's service. It also tells you that all the IP addresses under this organization ID belongs to Google Cloud customers as well. Now let's try on an actual Google service. Let's go ahead and ping any Google service of your choice. In my case, I'm gonna choose keep.google.com and we get a hold of its IP address. Now, if we go ahead and submit this IP address to Whois and scroll down to the organization section, you will not see the comment that we saw earlier, which means it indeed belongs to one of Google's services. Now, that's a quick way to confirm a Google's asset before submitting any sorts of vulnerability reports. Here are the key takeaways from this video. Number one, not everything owned by Google is considered its own infrastructure, 
meaning that it could be used by their customers who are using Google Cloud Platform. Number two, you should always verify who really owns or controls the website or the server before reporting the vulnerability to the Google Vulnerability Disclosure Program. And finally, have some fun. Thanks, Pwn Function. That was very insightful. Now, let's come back to this report and apply what we just learned. We can query the Whois database for this IP and look at the information returned, but oh, it turns out it is missing the cloud customer information. So is this a real Google IP? Well, here is the response from the Google Triager. This IP address is used to host applications that belong to Google Cloud customers. I have filed a bug to investigate why this was not marked in Whois. Unfortunately, sometimes mistakes can happen. In this case, the Whois entry was missing the information but it was in the end a customer's IP. The bug hunter accidentally attacked a customer's MySQL server and not Google's MySQL server. But in any way, as you can see, always make sure to check the Whois entry. Google tries to properly label IP addresses used by customers. And so if a Whois entry contains the notice, then you know for sure that you are attacking somebody else and it's not part of Google's vulnerability reward program.